are sociopaths, people are like, uh, they don't really care, they don't feel emotion or they, do they, are they considered psychopaths? The, the term sociopath and psychopath are probably equally ill-defined terms in psychology. And there's a lot of overlap from what I understand. I'm not a psychologist, I am a philosopher. But from what I understand, uh, those terms are not terribly well defined. But I think the, the overlap in this case uh, has to do with the lack of empathy. Whatever is involved in the lack of empathetic structures in their cognition of other people, that supposedly, from many people who uh, uh, wonder about the ethical implications of robotics, is a serious concern. I'm not so, so sure that's such a serious concern, given that uh, psychopaths, uh, as, I'm, as I would conceive of them, can be relatively mild, and if understood and treated appropriately, need not be so much of a problem. Plus, there's always the possibility of working up the ethical simulations to such a sophistication we can't tell the difference. Thank you. Thank you. What's up, Sanjay? Do you believe that robots and artificial intelligence can ever have true human emotion as a philosopher? I think that is expressed here in this sense. I don't care if they can or not. Um, I don't care if they can or not because I think that particular problem ultimately will be rendered irrelevant. Once robotic systems develop enough where the distinction between a full-blown simulation or virtual implementation is indistinct in practice from the, uh, from the agents that we regularly deal with, we'll just stop answering the question. Now, uh, as an analogy for this, consider this. You've seen the Star Wars movies? Sure. Is there any question raised in any of them about, the, about whether or not C-3PO or R2-D2 are conscious? No. Okay. Now. The, from the audience standpoint, where we can just deal with these objects fictitiously, okay, we can conceive the world that they're in and anthropomorphize those objects. So I'm not saying that that proves that they are conscious, but I think what it does is show this. Nobody within the context of the story, and I think exceedingly few people in the audience, only a couple of killjoys, would actually care about whether or not they are conscious. The thing is, is that their interactions with their environment are so rich with everything that we already employ ordinarily when we deal with conscious agents that the question, I think, about whether or not they are conscious drops out with respect to how to treat them as agents. But doesn't, doesn't that lead to the question that if they're conscious, conscious conscious or not, mm -hmm. then if they're not conscious, then they can't be psychopaths, correct? Well, but the issue, I guess, there is the, how the, the um, identification of someone as a psychopath plays into the way in which we wish to hold them responsible. And so identifying someone as a psychopath is not giving them you know, a get out of jail free card and letting them just run rampant and just say, oh, don't worry about this person. That person just doesn't have these other kinds of uh, of, of mental structures that, that certain people have. Uh, instead, it's uh, something that's a problem. We want to try to understand what the correlating factors might be to be able to address it and try to cure it, or, or at least identify it. So the question, though, about whether or not these robotic agents can genuinely feel, okay, that, from Locke's standpoint of causal neutrality, is an empty question. And so what I'm trying to do with this apparatus from Locke is to say that the more difficult questions have to do not with whether or not the being under question has bona fide feelings or what, what philosophers uh, call qualia, that is the, the felt sensations in experience. Uh, that question, I think that's a legitimate philosophical question. I don't think it in any way enters into computer science. I think it's just irrelevant to the whole project. And uh, I would add that you don't have to go that far back in history for people to be making claims about other human beings lacking those structures, too. And so it's not as if we suddenly solved the problem of consciousness when way back a long time ago men figured out that women were conscious. 
okay, or that women could reason or something. It's not as if now we had to solve the problem of consciousness to get that straight. Instead, we just stopped asking the question. I think the same thing would happen if the virtual cognitive persons get rich enough in their interactions with us. Thank you. Sure. I think this is uh, fairly similar to Saturday's question, but um, you mentioned that C-3PO may be faking empathy that would make him psychopathic, or that we would have real empathy, so-called. Um, by what standards would you judge fake empathy or emulated empathy? Only by the standards empathy? that Sanjay was talking okay. about, which I think are ultimately irrelevant. Okay. And, and, and so on that account, the question about whether it's virtual, okay, or bona fide, okay, yeah drops out as irrelevant once the interaction is rich enough. Okay. We don't know what the standards are for that. We know we're nowhere near that now, okay? Nowhere near that. And the, that question may be irrelevant to the, uh, to the way in which we deal with the robot. It might be very good for certain robots to have almost nothing like an emotional reaction. Would you want a robot like that being something that we have to rely on to deal with, the, let's say, the problems with a nuclear reactor? I would want that robot to be very unfeeling. Okay, um, so uh, yet if you're going to have the robot in your house like C-3PO, maybe you want it to act in a way that you know incorporates it into the way human beings ordinarily operate, so that it's just like anyone else, only deals with damage differently. When he falls apart, you can you know pack him up in Chewbacca's backpack and let him hook him around, and it's not that much of a problem. That would be a bit more of a problem you know, with, uh, you know, uh, Darth Vader, when he got all his limbs, ch limbs chopped off, it's not as if the, the emperor packed him up in a backpack and stuck him on his back. He had to do different things. But, so what you have in those differences is that uh, the difference in, in the underlying causal structures would have us deal with those objects differently, okay? Where I'm treating human being and robot each as objects. We deal with them differently because of their, you know, their, how brittle one is relative to the other. Uh, but the issue about whether or not they really have the feelings, if they act enough like us that we can't tell the difference, the lingering question is a strictly philosophical question that we haven't even settled for ourselves. So it strikes me as just irrelevant in practice. Great. Thank you. Sure. You first. Oh. Hey, I hate to uh, bring up the same topic again, but sure, the, it's a good topic. I think <laughs> it's the uh, I don't know. I can imagine writing algorithms that are very simple, like an if-then statement. And if you have a complex enough or rich enough in if-then statements to say, if I threaten you with life, the robot would say, please don't kill me and stuff like that. Um, that sounds like a simulation type code. But it, but if you if you follow this, if you make it rich enough, and the person comes into the environment, he might be fooled. Um, but right, as sure. opposed to like a, a more complex one that, that might have you know, pain variables and pleasure variables sure. and situations where the, the robot generally does not like to have certain uh, registers you know, uh, excited. And, and also add to this that th the higher order modeling functions, okay, those I think are really key. That unless you have a very high order functioning that treats its lower level functions as unknown in their peculiar operations, but only discoverable by means of feedback stimulus, okay? It's only in that case that you'd have something that cognitive, cognitively resembles a person, that you'd have a robot that is a, a simulation, but acting in a way that's extremely sensitive to certain kinds of stimuli. That's just a freakish, weird, low-level simulation. So. Uh, uh, I have no ability to speak intelligently about code. As far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to open it up you know, and say, whoa, that looks like a lot of code. Close it up and say, <laughs> you know, great, okay. But, I, but what is it, good? I have no idea. I, I'm, a, I'm a philosopher, okay? Um, that said, uh, the difference between genuinely computationally induced higher order cognitive processes and simulated demonstrations of the effects of higher order thought processes strikes me as both being implemented in, both being implemented in software. And I can't tell the difference between the two because I am an ignorant philosopher when it comes to that issue, okay? But something tells me 
the computer scientists that are involved in the projects of trying to produce this higher order stuff, they're drawing a distinction between that and a simulation. Yes. It's not up to me to comment on that kind of work. And it might very well be that by means of a concept like cognitive person, that we have a, a, a yardstick that will discover down the line that we just can't figure out how to meet. I don't know. I, I, I can in no way, in any, I can in no intelligent and informed way predict where computer science is going. It's unknown. I just hope it happens and that I get a better phone out of it. And, and so uh, that's what I want, okay? Um, and, 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 and if they're going to make an R2-D2, I want the early R2-D2, not the lame late one, okay? The, I want the one that's got all the gadgets, it can fly around, okay? Um, but I don't want the one that just like barely weasel, wheels around in sand, it can only have little contraptions well, pop out of it. older than the second one. Yeah, I, I, I want the ones from the, the third movie, okay? Yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you. Sure.